Welcome back to another rebuild here on Madden 24, and today we're basically rebuilding a Mutt team. The Philadelphia Eagles, a team that definitely underperformed last year, and everyone's basically under the consensus that it was a coaching issue, because this team has way too much talent to suck. It's not the players. If it's not the players, then whose fault is it? There's not really much to go into in depth. They have a great offensive line. Obviously, took a big hit with Jason Kelsey retiring. I had to create Lane Johnson because he's like, well, if, if oh, I got to change his age, actually. Whoops, cheater. Um, basically, he was like, uh, you know, Jason Kelsey's retiring. I'm retiring. Uh, so I had to make my own Lane Johnson here. I think he's 33, technically 34, but in this realm of a rebuild, uh, it's not May, right? It's not May yet, so this rebuild, he's technically 33. But obviously, the big talk about them is Saquon Barkley, and they did just get Kenny Pickett, uh, like, as I'm starting this. I hope there's no other moves that are being made. I'll add him, but I'm going to be honest with you, there's really no point to add him other than really just getting the draft picks correct. But this is a team that, like I said, you don't really have to do much. Jalen Hurts, very good quarterback. The, they're in, um, po impossible to stop under a yard. They now add Saquon Barkley, who is also a very strong uh, deadlift kind of uh, strong-legged runner. Uh, so it's going to be even harder to stop the tush push. Obviously, A.J. Brown is the Titans' worst mistake. Uh, Devontae Smith is obviously a true number two, could play number one if he had to. O-line, once again, we need a new center, new guard. That might be even where we go in the first round. You know, Dallas Goddard's a top 10 tight end, maybe just barely in the top 10, but it is a top 10. Uh, Fletcher Cox actually retired. Uh, and then, of course, Jalen Carter, the superstar DT, who was very good. Very good. Could have made an argument for him to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, and then what else do we have? Cornerbacks, definitely some age. Slay and Bradbury, definitely Bradbury mainly needs to be replaced. So as much as this is a mutt, quote-unquote, lineup, there are still a few positions of need. Uh, I also think there could be a chance that Hassan Reddick gets traded. Uh, of course, they added Bryce Huff. Uh, Safety-wise, they brought back Gardner Johnson on a three-year, was it a 21 mil, I believe, uh, contract. The Lions really didn't get to see much out of him as he was injured most of the year. Uh, but like I said, Mutt team. But from a Madden standpoint, let's, let's think about this subjectively. You're going to have to probably replace Lane Johnson before we win a Super Bowl, unless we win one this year or the next year. Gonna have to replace him shortly after that, though. Saquon's 27, so, you know, he's gonna regress pretty soon. Then we look at the defensive side of the ball. Huff and Sweat, they're not really gonna, re they're not gonna progress too much. Hassan Reddick's already, like, on the, the, you know, 86 overall regression side, right? Was he 27, 28, 29? Okay, I mean, I'm just counting at this point. Uh, decent finesse, but like I said, probably a guy you have to get rid of soon. Corners, got to replace both of them. Strong safety, might have to replace Blankenship. And the linebackers obviously brought in Devin White. Maybe we can develop N'Kobe Dean. It's a weird team, though, right? Like having Hassan Reddick at the left outside linebacker spot, rushing. It's going to be weird in Madden, so you kind of need to roll the Eagles playbook until you get rid of or you decide to get rid of Hassan Reddick. Uh, but yeah, this team does not need a lot. I'm going to be trying to get O-line. I'm going to be trying to get cornerback. And then for the most part, I'm just going to be coasting, really. But obviously, I did want to rebuild this team because they did add some of the bigger names in free agency. And I have not done a real Eagles rebuild in some time. Uh, I've Because of that fact, I've actually used them quite a bit in my like kind of challenge fantasy draft guides just to have the Eagles get a little bit of representation, you know? Uh, but I already have my guys scouted for the most part. It's really just who's going to be there at pick 22. And then real quick, I guess I'll add Kenny Pickett, even though it's going to mean basically nothing. I mean, what am I going to get out of like, uh, what, 74 overall, 73 overall, 26-year-old? I get a decent backup. In real life, we're talking something completely different. But in game, it's it's basically useless. And I still can't believe the damn Bears got Keenan Allen for a fourth round pick. I know he's on the older side. I know the you know the money was the Chargers were pretty much in a spot where if he doesn't take the restructure, probably need to just get rid of him f for free uh, because of how much he's making and they're like in a spot. But uh, damn you! Of course, it ruins my last rebuild. But speaking of, you know, having to change all these names and add them all to to different teams and all that, it's a little bit of work. So if you guys uh, have been enjoying the rebuilds. Maybe leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. We do a ton of franchise stuff and rebuilds. So if you uh, like rebuilds, stick around. Um, but yeah, little outdated Bears rebuild. But we ended up going with a wide receiver anyways. And 
and Keenan regresses pretty quickly, but let us enter this draft anyways. Let's see who goes where and when they want to go. Caleb Williams, number one. Drake May, number two. It is. And then number three, if it's Daniels, the Vikings trade might be for nothing. The Cardinals, wide receiver. Really? Even though I traded Marquise Brown to the Chiefs? Okay. Fuaga to the Chargers. Kind of makes sense, but wide receiver not being there. <laughs> After losing Keenan and potentially Mike Williams, that is a decision. The Titans wa walking into an O-line or a wide receiver, still not going to take one. I don't want to go Wiggins again. I've been doing that a lot in rebuilds, and I'm starting to get sick of it. Marvin Harrison, Neighbors, Adunze, they're all here. Brian Thomas. Oh, my God. Of course the wide receivers stick around when I really just don't need one. I could still take one, but I really don't need one. Newton, maybe. Don't really need DT, but why not? Jordan Davis isn't like an every down DT. Um, I don't know what I want to do here. I really don't, because I really want corner, but do I trade up for Mitchell? And because the Eagles are run by a Madden franchise person in real life, I'm going to be trading a first, a fourth, th and a fifth, and a sixth this to move up five spots with the Jaguars to take Mitchell, the cornerback, a lead athlete. I'm hoping he's hidden, because... I'm really only taking him just for variety, as uh, I've taken Wiggins in like two of the last like three rebuilds. Need a cornerback, and I really wanted Cooper DeGene, but wasn't there. Quinion uh, Mitchell, he's going to be our cornerback. Hidden development trait, 95 speed, 95 excel. Welcome to the squad. Eagles can't keep getting away with this. By the way, the Bengals got Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> Could you imagine? That is so busted. No shot. Oh, I was going to go for Barton, too. I didn't know when he was going to go. And we've seen it happen before. I think even the Eagles did it. I'm pretty sure they... I know somebody signed a free agent once before and ended up using them as trade bait. I think it might have been actually... Yeah, I think it was the Eagles with Terrell Edmonds, no? If I'm not mistaken. But they're going to do it again here with Matt Hennessy, who they just signed, who is likely going to be their center, I would imagine. Uh, trading off a second-round pick this year, a fourth-round pick two years from now, and a fifth next year to the Panthers, and you would think, oh, this might be for an offensive lineman. They really need an offensive lineman. Why else would they trade a lineman to get him? Nope, the Eagles are going to do what the Eagles do. And Odunze, sure, he would be great to get, but there's zero chance he's this far. They are going to end up with the combine goon, Xavier Worthy, to add a bit of speed to the wide receiver room. 99 speed, 97 excel. This is Bengals draft class. I think 99 speed, 97 excel is very fair because... EA doesn't usually just only go off of Combine either, so as much as a lot of people want to say, like, make him 100 speed, EA, do it. I don't think that's going to happen anyways. And then with this pick, we're probably going to trade down, grab some linemen just to have somebody there. But we do have Jurgen still who can play center, which that's kind of what they drafted to play anyways. But I'm in the business of going for best available at all times. So at pick 22 in the second round, if there is somebody here that I really like, which might be Peyton Wilson... I mean, I'm kind of going to take them, you know? Also, Theo Johnson. I don't know why. I just feel like he's going to be eagle, an eagle as well. This team's just going to be loading up on talent anytime they can get it. Do I go Peyton Wilson? The value is absolutely there. I'm going Peyton Wilson, the athlete. Hidden development trait. 92 speed, 90 excel. The Eagles do it again. That's all everyone's going to be saying, which they usually do almost every uh, you know draft anyways. But the Eagles do it again. What a draft this has been. Oh, it was just glitched out. 23 years old. Do I like a 23-year-old? He's a new player for me. Matt Lee, why not? Screw it. Normal dev. Welcome. But man, what a draft. Obviously, we hurt ourselves a little bit for the future with some draft trades, but in the end, we didn't really kill us that much. We still have our first. We still have our second. Probably still have our third, I think. But we end up with Quint uh, Quinion Mitchell, a very good cornerback. We have Worthy, the fastest wide receiver in the draft class, it would seem. And then Peyton Wilson, a very athletic linebacker. Who can uh, definitely... I don't know. We're not going to be in a 4-3. I just want to say start. but And then we get Matt Lee. Would have loved to see a little bit more depth. But I think the Eagles also kind of see this as a like win-now situation anyways. Because why would they have traded basically three draft picks to get back, I think, one and Kenny Pickett? They want a good quarterback in case bad things happen. you know, And uh, they know better than anyone with you know Nick Foles being able to carry and win a, help, win a Super Bowl anyways. So, I mean... This team is, uh, you know, obviously seeing this year as another win-or-go-home type of thing. Jason Kelsey obviously being gone sucks, but they obviously think this is still a really good chance to have their Super Bowl win.
And the one thing about the Eagles, though, is that it's it's kind of hard to do a rebuild for them because they are a rotation team, right? I mean, which team doesn't rotate with pass rushers for the most part? But they rotate hard, and I can't really do that in Sim, right? So Nolan Smith might even start over Sweat as... I believe Sweat even just took a uh, restructure. I actually restructured some of his money. I took away, so I don't know how much, but I took some of it away. Uh, his guarantee, or his um, salary anyways. But I think Nolan Smith's going to be the guy I mainly start and then just have Josh Sweat as like the sub on all the spots. We have to let Fletcher Cox retire. We have to release Mr. Maddox. And I really want to just change this to a 4-3, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here because... Once again, it's a team that can easily rotate anyone. You know, you don't have to have, for the whole season, Hassan Reddick playing left outside linebacker. He can play anywhere. But in Sim, I can't really do that. So it's a weird spot. But I'm just going to have Wilson on the right side. N'Kobe Dean and White just playing there. I'm just going to let it play how it is, honestly, and uh, release the players that need to be released, prop up the players that need to be propped up, and uh, go from there, really. And here is the squad for Season 1 of this rebuild. I'm not sure what the plan is for this rebuild. Usually we do five years, but we'll see. Uh, because it's such a good team out the gate, we'll see if it changes things. I don't think it will, though. Uh, I mean, sometimes you don't see the Eagles even get to the Super Bowl, right? So we'll see what happens. But uh, we definitely added quite a bit of talent. Do we hurt the team in the end, though? Right, We went for the win-now approach, adding a super beast at wide receiver three, adding uh, great value with Wilson, and then getting a very good cornerback in Mitchell. Uh, I think cornerback and linebacker, I think we're pretty fair. But Worthy was definitely a bit of a, like, I kind of just feel like the Eagles are... Like, I don't know why, but I feel like the Eagles are going to have either Xavier Worthy and or Theo Johnson. Because they just draft like a Madden user, and Madden users love speed. They just they just draft like him. They grab that kind of crazy value. Can you pick it, obviously, at number two wide receiver? maybe Or a quarterback. Uh, maybe they'll get... A new running back to add with it because Skinwell's all right, but Lou Nichols uh, didn't really see much from him, I believe, with uh, my Packers. So, uh, yeah, maybe need a better number three wide receiver. O line, we didn't really do much for him, but it's still a good line, even if you have to replace like a center and a guard still. Also, if you uh, have drugs on you and you see someone that looks like Cam Jurgens approaching you and asking you about him, say, I don't know what you're talking about, man, because that mofo is a cop. I had to explain the joke because some people might not get it. How am I frustrated with Xavier Worthy? We literally just got him. We He literally just got here. One of my favorite memes of all time. I don't know what has got here. Not particularly a great season, to be honest, but Hassan Reddick, I think, is going to be a guy we have to let go, especially since I'm going to have to pay Landon Dickerson a very ridiculous amount of money right now, as this is what he signed for in real life. I don't know the exact like bonus and all that, but... Four-year 84, but I'm going to make sure. But I'm pretty sure it was a four-year 84. Indeed it was, which leaves us with a meager $10 million. Devin White likely going to be gone, which, I mean, they rotate linebackers every single year, it seems. Sweat's going to be gone. Hassan Reddick's going to be gone. Uh, Blankenship probably gone. Gainwell likely gone. But overall, I mean, it could be worse. Oh, crap. We got to pay freaking Jake Elliott, too. He just got a four-year 24, I believe. Which isn't actually that bad. It's kind of what he's asking for. He might not even take it, honestly. Yeah, I was about to say, he might not even take it. Five mil left, and that doesn't even account for the potential fifth-year option of Jordan Davis. Yeah, I mean, it's a Mutt team, but the problem with Mutt teams is it costs a lot of coins. You generally can't tell me that dick analogy, though. And despite having a Mutt team, EA has once again showed us that it is the schemes that win games, not the players. Once again, we talked about it, right? The uh, the Eagles underperformed, but they still made the playoffs, and that's really what matters. No one really saw them doing it, and look at the games, though. Lost five of the last six. Now, there's some teams in here, right? You have the Ravens, you have the Cowboys, kind of the Packers, kind of the Browns, but we should have won more than we did. We absolutely should have won more than we did. And yeah, like I said, nobody really seen the Eagles as a team. They just They looked just so not in tune. Like, they, they just looked not like themselves, but they still made the playoffs. So, the fact that we didn't make the playoffs is pretty disappointing. Uh, Jalen Hurts with a bunch of rushing touchdowns. It's hard to come off of this scheme, though, because once again, this, this Eagles team is going to ride out that tush push until it's literally banned. Or, you know, Jalen Hurts gets injured, or something changes, or maybe because Jason Kelsey's gone, they can't do it as effectively. But, we can't really change from that scheme yet. It's probably the reason why we're not going to... Nice, best running back for Saquon. 
why we're not going to be able to to get dev ups or wins even uh, you know so there's going to be some give and take with this but i'm going to keep rolling with it for a little bit longer uh, as this is only the first season after all but yeah the commander's going through 14 and 3 at one point we're like 5 and 0 until we beat them ironically enough is definitely something but uh we have the Bengals versus the cowboys in the super bowl it seems and the Cowboys do win. We have 24 mil. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but I did kind of feel like we should have had more money than we did. So we'll see what happens. But uh, offensive dev ups, none. Hopefully somebody on defense. And Garner Johnson is that somebody, which is great because obviously he is on a contract for three years, technically two more years. And uh, you know he's on his way up. But yeah, we look like we're going to be losing Devin White, look like we're going to be losing Reddick, and thankfully going to be losing Slay because he's actually regressed kind of hard. There's going to be a lot more needs going into this next season than there were going into this season. But if there's anyone that can do it, it's someone else. So hopefully you can uh, call them up and tell them we need help. 24 mil. Can we keep any of these players, though? Maybe Son Reddick goes to the, the right end spot, left end spot or something, and, and just starts. We switch to a proper 4-3 and not have this bull crap where EA is like, we don't know what to do with you. Here's no stats. You suck. Uh, but there it is. 24 mil. Hassan Reddick. What is his contract needs anyways? Two year 47. That is a lot of money. Jordan Davis on the fifth year option. I'd rather just replace him potentially because nose tackles just don't really work well in sim for some reason, even if you're in, in an actual 3-4 rather than whatever the hell we are. Um, but it's also kind of expensive. And then Devin White's asking for a lot of money for... Really just a fast name. Josh Sweat, obviously, did not play well for us, so injury concerns and just that not playing well part. Good enough for me to move on and then re Blankenship. We're just going to give Sidney Brown a chance, I think. Running back, we can find someone else. They're dime a dozen, kind of. And really the big thing that's taken a hit is... Oh, crap, he didn't want it after all. Well, he should now want it. Right? Okay, I guess I have to tag a kicker. Uh, but yeah, these... Uh, this is the depth. The depth has taken a hit. We'll take a look at free agency, but yeah, there's a very unlikely chance we spend any money here because we can barely afford the guys we have. All of a sudden, 33 mil shows up. Oh, did Lane Johnson retire? Lane Johnson probably retired. Oh, no. We're in a bigger hole than we thought. Demarcus Lawrence would be great, but I think this team's now kind of actually in a rebuild. And once again, I talk about this Eagles team being like a mutt team or a, a, a franchise team usered by a Madden player. What Madden user isn't seeing Greg Newsom and wanting him instantly? I want him instantly. I don't know if we can do anything to get rid of um, Slay for a, not a big loss, but I would love Greg Newsom. And outside of that, I don't think I want to spend money. Ooh, a Debo, a superstar. That's for about nine per. What's his actual ratings before I even think about it? Very good zone coverage. Could play safety even, but... Yeah, I think it's just going to be Greg Newsom and then draft a bunch of linemen, probably. Might have a trade down from the first because we really don't have much going on in the later rounds, I don't think. But yeah, that's, I think, going to be the plan. And we pay Greg Newsom a four-year 64 massive addition as we now have a truly goaded cornerback here. 93 speed with the man in zone coverage of... 88 and 84, which is just great. Press is great. I mean, just a great corner. And we're actually getting some offers here for Mr. Kenny Pickett. I thought we'd be taking Grayson Murphy in the fifth round pick. I'm hoping Grayson Murphy is a pass rusher since he was an outside linebacker for the Viking or the Raiders. But I suppose we do need a guy that can stand up anyways. So at the end of the day, even if he isn't, uh, we'll find use for him, I'd imagine. Let's see what he is. Grayson Murphy does kind of seem like a pass rusher, and he is. Block shed's a little low, but... He is a pass rusher, and he has potential. Normal dev, 22 years old. Could even be a starter for us at some point, but great depth. And what did we get? A fifth-round pick back. So, I mean, technically lost on that trade in real life, but uh, it is still a good trade for us. I mean, we'll take it. It's actually surprising that, you know, the Raiders didn't try to get someone like Kenny Pickett, to be honest. But, uh, you know, let's go into this draft. Here we go, pick 14. Why did I think we were going to have a higher pick than that? I don't know why I thought I was going to have a higher pick than that, but can obviously trade up. And, um... Yeah, I had to leave this for a little bit. I kind of mentioned in the Steelers rebuild with Justin Fields. Uh, Justin Fields wasn't there rebuilding with... Oh, you get it. Uh, that I kind of got banned for talking a little bit too much crap online, uh, you know, in game chat. And I uh, had to leave this rebuild for a little bit. So I'm a little I'm a little lost on where we left off. But uh, we could definitely trade up. And we need a pass rusher, I think, 
as A, we don't know if Nolan Smith's going to be good, and B, we don't know if Huff's going to be good, and he obviously kind of needs a contract, so definitely want to trade up. I like that guy we just looked at, and I don't know too much about Paul Castle. I'm just hoping Paul Castle goes first, so then I can just trade up for Hal Clark, because getting up from 14 to even, like, 8 is tough, and, I mean, either of them could be gone by 8. I think Hal Clark looks really good, though, and honestly, some of the other edge rushers, like Eubanks and Knight, didn't really turn out to be great, so I don't know. They could be hidden, they could be superstar, they could be X-Factor, but I'm a person that likes to bet a little bit more on as much guarantees as possible. Uh, Sawyer goes... Number one overall actually did look pretty good. Uh, wow, okay, never mind. Yeah, I was never getting a number three. So, uh, I mean, there's just no way. Maybe I do go with one of those other DNs. Knight's gone too. Damn, I mean, he's not even elitely fast. Uh, good pursuit, good awareness, good tackle. Injury's low. Power move B, play rep. I mean, I kind of feel like Eubanks is going to be that guy. I don't know why I think Castle's going to suck. But at the same time... With B block shed, A... Oh, he has B power move. It wasn't A. This is actually tough for me. Uh, awareness is an A to B at least. B play rag. A to B tackle. I don't think you can honestly go super wrong with either of them. I think this guy is going to be normal. I don't... I'm going to go Paul Castle. Please! Yes! Hidden Deb! I genuinely was just so distraught. I had no idea who to take there. Also, I didn't really think about it, but I actually really sold. I, I don't know why Goddard's in my mind as a guy that we don't need to replace, but I looked at the team, and he's actually like an 82 overall and needs a contract. I should have absolutely went with Jalen Martin. I need more draft picks to try and get linemen because we have really sold. Oh, that is perfect. Thank you, Miami. We have really sold getting devs, hidden dev linemen. We have just not done well. And it might be a little bit of a reach, but I might just take the tight end here. Nah, I can still trade down. Tight end isn't an absolute need just yet. And uh, we can still get this, you know, six round pick. Brian Nixon is six foot four, 21 years old, athletic as hell. Please be hidden. Oof, normal dev. Could still be the tight end of the future, though. You know, 73, 74 overall, we could rock with that. All right, we trade Cam Jurgens, a third next, a fifth next, a sixth next for Kalen Saunders and a third round pick. Obviously, didn't want Kalen Saunders, just needed to take some of their, uh, their cap woes away, if you will. Uh, and with this. We're going to be taking Mr. Matthew Davis, who looks really solid. A bunch of uh, really good ratings in there. Decently athletic. Please be hidden. He is not the best athleticism, but like I said, I think that's a fair argument of decently athletic. That That's what I would consider decently athletic. Not slow, but not elite. And maybe we trade up for alignment, but I think 14. I think 12 to 17, you're almost always going to have some sort of lineman there. There's a lot of question marks here. There really is. I'm going to take a look at Elam because... Run block woes don't scare me because a lot of players suck at run block. As you can see, really good pass blocking. So I'm going to take the chance of Larry Elam, and he is hidden development trait. So we can use one more, maybe two. So we trade a third this, which was like 28, uh, a seventh and a seventh, plus Tyler Steen and Mr. Kalen Saunders to move up like 13 spots. Steen's still pretty young. Uh, we're just trying to get better than Steen if we can. Uh, and here it is, the last pick of our draft, realistically, Matt Davidson, who is hidden. I mean, we bet pretty hard on these these linemen that we didn't know a lot about, yet they both ended up hidden. Once again, kind of talking about that Steelers rebuild a little bit, little bit but we, I mean, we had a, an abundance of picks in that one, and we're drafting normals. This one, we have the opposite of that, and we're drafting hidden, so... Just a little bit of luck sometimes. Uh, Jarrell Blades, he was on my list. I didn't know much about him. I put him at, you know, B to D power. I'm just going to grab him. And I don't know why. I just kind of felt like he was going to be hidden. I drafted uh, one of those types of players on uh, in our Bears League, and he ended up becoming a superstar. Didn't get to use him much, but uh, I thought maybe we would have got that again. But, hey, I'm really curious to see Eubanks more than anything. I want to... Please... I want to see if we made the the right call or not, but also I do want to. Why is it lagging? I I literally can't. Please stop lagging. Uh, oh oh, what the hell was all of it? Were his ratings actually like really bad, and I just couldn't see them? Because this looked like one of those prototypical seventy three plus overalls that were going to be hidden, and instead, while he does have good athleticism, decent catching, and all the catching traits, he is so bad. 
Castle's not that good of an overall either. Davis is fine. Elam's fine. Davidson a little low. Blade's actually a little higher than I would have expected. Uh, what am I doing? Let's take a look at the dev because I can't really compare him to the other guy if we don't know the dev. Paul Castle, 77 power move, 74 block shed. Was expecting better, but look at those traits. Holy crap. He's got like literally every pass or a straight you need. Don't know what position we need. I think it's left end, and that's not the position. Star dev, okay, well, as long as the other guy's not hidden, <laughs> if he's at least hidden, he might be better than our guy automatically. Matthew Davis, I don't know what position we actually need. I think it's middle, is it? Might be right out. Uh, no coverage at all. Block shed's great, but no coverage at all. Let's take a look. Star dev, I was hoping for some sort of superstar, and we actually don't need to move those players, so we'll find out what their dev is whenever, you know, the dev is shown. Uh, look at all these overalls, though. 83 overall middle linebacker? I don't know if I've ever seen that high of an overall. Of course, very good. Pursuit 87, 88 tackle. Block shed's decent. Zone coverage is decent. Not a whole lot of hit power, but play rack awareness is great. Strength is pretty good. No press as usual. A very iffy man. Decent jumping. Catching is pretty good. Very interesting to see an 83 overall. What's that dev? Is he generational? He's generational. I mean, he doesn't really feel generational, but the overall tells me he is. Let's take a look at Clark. He is hidden dev, as expected. Very good finesse and block shed. Is more athletic than the guy we took as well. What's the dev? If he's only star, though, I wouldn't regret anything. Superstar. Okay, so worth it for them. But obviously, if he's star, that pick, you know, 14 to number 3 is like an extra first round pick and then some. So, kind of have to factor that in when deciding that. Three straight DTs. Castle, where's Eubanks? 74 overall, higher than our guy. And normal. I actually thought this was going to be the opposite. We dodged a bit of a bullet here. We definitely dodged a bullet there. Also, want to see Kilgore, number two in the second round. 75 overall was very good hidden. You could argue, too, that if we would have went with him, we could have traded Jordan Davis for a late second anyways. So maybe uh, maybe could have traded up for him, but it is only star. So, you know, it's not like we did anything crazy. Oh, yeah, the tight end I want to see as well. Did we sell at that pass rusher when we could have had the tight end instead? Of course, the tight end went all the way down there. Hidden development trade, six foot six. Of course, he goes to the Chiefs. 89 speed, 88 excel, 82 catch. Catch of traffic and spec are great. Injury's a little low, in fairness. Has all the traits. If he's only star, though, I don't mind. But if he's higher, then that would suck. And only star. So, yeah, I mean, a little disappointing. I mean, those ratings, I thought he was going to be a goon goon. Like, I thought we were talking about, like, superstar beast out the gate. Uh, and then Bins. Oh, Bins was on my list, too. But safety was just not as important of a need when you looked at the rest of the roster. But yeah, I mean, the tight end was a bad pick, but everything else, I think we actually did a pretty good job. Here we go for season two. This is the offense. Obviously, we have some youthful up-and-coming uh, linemen to work with, but I will say we might be replacing both tackles after this season. Lane Johnson could retire, and Mylotta is going to ask for a billion dollars. Wide receivers are great. Tight end needs to be replaced. Running back, I think, is fine for now, obviously. Uh, and then Jalen Hurts, obviously, would love to get a dev up there, but... Barkley should be good for at least another season, maybe two if we're lucky. And then defensively, we have a replacement edge coming in for potentially Nolan or Huff. Might even need to replace both, depending on how they play. Uh, you know, Nolan, if his ceiling is not going to ever get reached. And then Bryce, if he's not playing well, why would I keep him around? He's only an 80 overall. He's 27. His ceiling's 30, 83, 84 overall at the very best. Uh, and then cornerbacks, we're set for the future. Slay and Bradbury, unfortunately, cannot be let go at this point. Because of their guarantees, we would just lose more in the long run. Um, but then again, you could also maybe trade a Slay for something right now. Because he's still a pretty damn good cornerback. And I don't know, maybe there's a team that's willing to give up like a fourth round pick for him. Is that Trenton Simpson I see? Oh, uh, we can't afford it. Or they can't afford it. Well, I guess we're keeping him. Breakout for Jalen Hurts. He's back to X-Factor. 60 million left. This is going to be an interesting time for us. Because... We have a lot of big names to re-sign. Uh, oh, actually, not as bad as I thought. Don't know if N'Kobe Dean's going to be the future at the linebacker position, but we're not as bad off as I thought. So Jalen Carter is for sure a guy we need to keep long-term. Nolan Smith might be like next season's last season. We might even look to replace him. This team's a little bit tougher to re-sign, or uh, not re-sign, but rebuild than I thought it was going to be, to be honest, because obviously there's a lot of expense but obviously, Devontae Smith is, without a doubt, a name we want to keep. We'll keep him till he's 32, I think is fair. And boom, that's a lot of money for uh, him and decent money for us. 
Mylotta, man, that is an offensive lineman, isn't it? He is really good. What is his performances like, though? 10 sacks last year, probably on par for about 8 allowed this year. I really genuinely don't know. 23 million per. I genuinely don't know if it matters how good of a player they actually are or if it's all on overall. And then Jordan Davis. This is kind of why I wanted to trade him because it's a lot of money and he really has shown nothing to deserve that kind of money anyways. So I think we're just going to be letting guys like Jordan Davis, Dallas Goddard, and I don't know, someone else. No, there's no one else on the list. Go for pretty much free, basically. But uh, we have a little bit of money. Should be able to afford Jalen Carter. I just don't know what else we're going to lose. And I think win or lose, we're in. But if we win, we get the division. And we lose, but we still all in the division. Did the Cowboys miss the playoffs? I changed the defensive scheme because we don't have uh, Hassan Reddick anymore. So I felt like their unique approach is kind of gone without him being there. I wonder if the Cowboys made it or not. I have to show you guys the wins loss because the Cowboys are almost always in like the Super Bowl, let alone in the playoffs. So if they miss and we're directly in their division slash conference... I mean, there's definitely a reason for me to want them to not make the playoffs, and they didn't make them. The Niners are still here. The Lions are pretty good, but this is not the toughest conference in the world right now. Let's take a look at our stats and awards. But yeah, I changed the defensive scheme because there's no Hassan Reddick, but I kept the offensive scheme because I felt like it is a very unique team with rushing with their quarterback, although you could see didn't really use him that much. I guess Saquon's like, no, my touchdown. Uh, but looking at the receivers, okay numbers considering we really didn't put up that much good, you know, passing stats, especially touchdowns. Uh, looking at the O-line, actually pretty impressive. So Payne Mylotta looks like a good decision. Lane Johnson, it'll probably save us some money whenever he retires, but obviously that means another really good player gone on the offensive line. Bryce Hoff and Nolan combined for nine sacks, which just isn't going to cut it. So we're going to likely replace Bryce and then probably even Nolan uh, but yeah, let's take a look at the yearly awards. MVP goes to Mahomes. Uh, Jalen Hurts at nine, I guess, is for the touchdown to pick ratio. I thought maybe if it was anyone, it would have been Saquon, who did win Offensive Player of the Year. Not really shocked by that. No one on the Defensive Player of the Year list. No one on the Rookie of the Year list. And we do get Matthew Davis, Rookie of the Year on defense. Best running back for Saquon. O line is a lot of Lions in there, a couple of Packers. And that's pretty much it. So a few awards, a few close calls. And a playoff berth? There's not really much more you can ask for than a playoff berth. As we are now an 89 overall team going up against the 81 overall Cardinals, who also added players that they probably won't in real life. Going to the end of the game, though. 0-0. Zero zero. We do get a field goal to start off the game. Defense is doing an okay job. They get three points. This offense is just not scoring, though. 10-3. to three. Just going to try to at least keep this as much Eagles as possible, right? Rocking the Eagles offense. Defense, like I said, I think it needs to change because otherwise you're just not going to be able to get the uh, the numbers you want. You're not going to get a base 4-3 getting the sacks where they should be. I'm going to have coverage guys getting sacks more than the freaking pass rushers. Uh, but we do make the next round, the divisional round, just barely. Uh, they had a freaking fake. Uh, is that a fake or is that a backup? No, it was a backup. It might have still been a fake, you know, fake field goal. But uh, Barkley, one touchdown, 74 yards. Uh, A.J. Brown was pretty good. Worthy actually had a touchdown with 86 yards. One sack for Carter. One pick for Wallace. And clean kicking. To the divisional round against the Niners. This team and the Niners do actually have a pretty big rivalry, especially if you want follow Twitter at all. There is always a lot of crap talk between these two teams. Other than, like, the Cowboys. I mean, I guess the Eagles kind of just fight with everyone, especially in their division, but... Other than the Cowboys, they're probably at this point, their biggest rivals are the Niners. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if any of you Eagles fans are, or even Niners fans, I guess, are in the comment section watching this to this point. I think that's a fair statement. It, it definitely seems like that. Uh, I would say the Packers and the Niners, but there's not really much of a, a rivalry or a hate field or hate fest when Niners are just smoking the Packers every time anyways. Uh, but second half, we're in a closer game than I thought we would have been because our offense has sucked. And their offense is, you know, pretty damn good on paper. Although, third and nine. We get the touchdown on third and nine. The defense made a stop and then choked. And this looks like the Niners are going to win the game. They literally walk off with the game winner. That is crazy. The team almost did it and unfortunately fell short. Brock Purdy outplaying Hurts because this scheme is just not built to be traditional. I mean, it's very, uh, like control the clock, win barely 
type of uh, you know sim stats. Jake Moody missing two of his four, four kicks, and we still lost. You can't miss that many kicks and still win the game. That's crazy that we let them off the hook. Super Bowl, is it going to be the Chiefs versus the Niners? It is the Chiefs versus the Niners. Lack of money. We are broke. Probably going to fifth-year option Jalen Carter just to kick the can a little bit, to be honest, as uh, the Niners win by a lot. So in fairness, the Niners are winning 55-27 to over the Chiefs, and we barely lost to them. Maybe we're not on, you know, as far off as we thought. DevOps doesn't appear to be any on offense. And then defensively, Davis went up in Dev, and I think that was it. I think it was just Matthew Davis, who obviously Rookie of the Year was going to win that award. Don't think I even paid N'Kobe Dean either, which now I'm starting to think about. It. I probably shouldn't. Probably should move Wilson or whoever is more balanced to middle linebacker and then just draft a new guy because one of the linebackers, usually I think it's the right out, doesn't get as much, uh, you know, playtime as the rest, but could use a safety. Sidney Brown's there, but he's probably like 25, not 26 with no zone coverage. He is depth at best. So, I mean, I'm not sure how we're going to pull it off without a third-round pick as well. But we need to get a new linebacker, a new DT, probably a new edge rusher, but we can hold off for another year. And Lane Johnson's still here, so not a tackle. And probably a tight end. Can't believe we're losing this much. I was thinking, okay, no Slay, no Bradbury. We're fine. We're chilling. Although, at the same time, did Slay... Maybe he retires here, actually. Or did he already retire? Or the retirement's already went and he would have not counted. I don't know. But maybe we can release him. I don't know if he needs a contract and, like, he'll be off the books if we release him or if he actually needs to be signed here. Uh, is that Bradbury? Bradbury's on the list, so you don't get any savings from releasing him. Hopefully Slay's still on the team and we can release him for a lot of money because otherwise I don't know what to do about our lack of funds. But as you can see here with Jordan Davis, it does seem like Jalen Carter is going to be asking for quite a bit anyways. So we're going to fifth-year option this and push this down the line a little bit. And uh, I think R uh, Nolan needs to be replaced pretty soon. So I think we're chilling outside of that. Nakobe's money isn't bad. But we can easily get a third-round pick to get just the same type of player as him. So I'm going to be letting him go. And that's a lot from me. That is, I mean, like I am the ultimate draft Nakobe Dean in a fantasy draft dude. Yet here I am in a regular rebuild letting him go. Like that's crazy. That's actually kind of crazy, but some big names here. Micah Parsons, obviously, we could use any of these players. Par Parsons, Andrews, maybe not Stanley or Trent Brown, but the problem is we don't really have any money, so unless there's, like, some super backup contract, like we can get Kevin Byard on, like, a four-mil deal, some sort of safety, perhaps, I doubt I'm going to spend much money in free agency. It's going to be pretty much mainly draft, but the one thing I do want to see is hopefully Darius Slay is still around, and hopefully he is a huge savings to release because if not, like I said, I don't know where our money is. And I don't know where our money is. Unless there's some dead money from him retiring. I, I don't know. I mean, we do have some expensive linemen, three of them. But it's still kind of crazy how broke we are. So after kind of a low ball deal on Mr. Kevin Byard, he did not join us back. But that's okay. We are going to be looking at safety in the draft. Pick 25. I really think we just have so many needs that no matter how good of a player that was up here, we kind of have to trade down. There's a bunch of different tight ends. I don't know who I want to go for, if any of them. Maybe uh, Chris Cage, perhaps, but some offensive linemen as well. Like Thorpe, day three, looks like a must-grab player. And then maybe Tommy Johnson looks okay. I think we're probably just, you know, like I said, going to be moving down. And as far as safety goes, I think we're going to be going for Marky Kennard as he uh, has an A-man C zone. And he's pretty athletic. I think this is going to be one of those, like, gems, but they're very easy to see gems. And I'm really hoping that's the case. Uh, if not, it might be back to... Uh, Sydney Brown, which I wasn't uh, too fond of as is. All right, we got a really good trade here. We trade from 25 down to 40. Crap, I don't even know what this is. 46, maybe? Got all the respective picks from there. 78, 110, and then a fourth next year. Uh, the Patriots not really known for trading up, but maybe going for a QB. No, they're going for a corner. Dion Love. We could pick 14 in the second round. I'm not even sure if this is where we're going to be drafting anyone, but uh, I wanted that trade down bad. We got it. It was worthy. Could go tight end as well. Quayshawn Fant, pretty athletic, but I mean, he's not that great, to be honest. Uh, I put anyone with any sort of athleticism, and I was like, maybe I'll scout them further. We'll see. Uh, Banfield pass rusher, I really didn't like him too much, to be honest. 
two linebackers, but I could probably just go with Carson a little bit later. Uh, and that's kind of like really what we're looking at. So unless we go with Samson, I mean, I think we can go to like the third round. Uh, I don't mind pick 28 in the second round, so I'm going to keep there 25. I'll keep that, but 14's a little high, so we'll probably move this down again. 55, we get a third next year. That's not bad, but I would like to get like something this year as well. Or instead. But I suppose it's a pretty good trade, so let's take that trade. The Texans giving us a third round next year to move back. Like, I don't even know what is that, 10 spots? Now I'm kind of uh, thinking about Theo Ross. I'm going to take Theo Ross. Hidden Dev, that's a win. Hidden Dev linemen are always wins. Don't forget that. Never forget it. I think Carson's a little bit more guaranteed. He's also younger. Yes, Hidden Dev. Almost took Chisholm. I don't know if he's good, but uh, I think we did all right. Could use more linemen, but I think we're fine. We can always go with the, uh, you know, let's go to the next pick, and then we'll we'll see what we want to do, because there are some tight ends there as well. I don't know how I feel about these tight ends, because I don't know much about them. 6'6", 21, very fast speed. Don't know about that Excel. And then we have Clark Durant, very athletic as well, but he's 6'3". And then we have Burst, Jarek Burst, 22 years old. I kind of like Wagner because of the speed, and obviously being 21 years old. Uh, he is very athletic. I'm going to take Kevin Wagner. And he's hidden! Win! I don't know if he was supposed to be faster than this, but I'm chilling. Hidden dev tight end. We kind of did the thing. Damn, son. They are really uh, asking for a lot here. I thought we were kind of like over-trading, but we're actually like under-trading, apparently. Oh, my. And, of course, we obviously see that they're broke as hell, so they can't afford any sort of players. Okay, that took a lot of quantity, and there's no way a team would do that, but you know what? We don't really care for the later rounds anyways. This is probably the most we've drafted in a fourth round ever, and we're only taking two players. Uh, with this pick, obviously, it's going to be Kennard. A lot of potential there with the A-man. C-zone, please. And he's hidden. I knew he was going to be a gem. I mean, it's not even... I mean, he's a gem, but he's not like... I don't know. I, I don't even know what you said. Like, you call it a gem, but he's not hidden, I guess. He's just a gem. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Doesn't have to be a hidden jab. I saw Thorpe. I absolutely saw Thorpe, didn't I? Ah, I saw Thorpe. All right, the Vikings give me a fifth and a sixth this year. I don't know where that's going to take me, but a whole round from now. I might be able to land both of those players. I don't know if Heinz will be there, but I would imagine the safety would be. And I was kind of debating on taking either of them at that spot. Keaton, not quite the corner I wanted, but I'm going to take him for value. Carlos Keaton. And another hidden! What a gem! I was going to take Hines. I'm curious to see two players, Thorpe and Hines. Obviously, our own players as well. If Williams is there, I might as well take him for the value. I just seen him there. Wow, they really put him on the screen for a long time there. I appreciate it. I just totally forgot that I just didn't grab a DT. I don't think we're going to get anyone halfway decent here anyways, but I'm going to grab someone to have some value. Staley looks pretty decent too. Okay, so we got a couple of guys with some like... You know, ratings that are okay. Maybe we find ourselves a gem. Now, if we found a starting DT in the sixth, someone put us out. That DT, I mean, yes, you have the A finesse, but that is a bait out if I've ever seen it. Cooper doesn't look good either, though. I'm going to take Cooper, I guess, anyways. Deontay Cooper, 90 strength at least. Yeah, we're going to have to trade for a DT or have like a really weak free agent because I completely forgot about the DT position. I don't even know if I forgot if or if just like all of them were gone. By the time we got to the 14th pick? Or was I just so blinded by the tight end and O-line that I just completely forgot? Either way, uh, 73-75, 73-75. That's very consistent of you. Of course, the cornerback also uh, hidden, but 68 overall. Don't know what the devs are like. Uh, do we have to move the safety? We don't, so there's really not a point to look at anyone. I guess Ross will be a right tackle for us in the future, so we'll take a look at his dev. Kind of balanced, but just in general, not a great power blocker. Definitely want to see the uh, players we could have had. Dev, star dev, not really shocking. Uh, but yeah, some decent devs. I guess we'll take a look at some of these players. Kevin Wagner, hidden dev, really needed a, uh, a future tight end. And this guy has a lot brighter of a future than the guy that we drafted. Only star dev, sadly. So many other tight ends that were decent. 85, why not? Uh, Kennard, very important player as well because he's an auto starter. Uh, really good man, decent zone, pretty good hit power. This guy was a gem. There is no arguing that. Dev, how gemly. Star, fair enough. 
Fair enough. What about the middle linebacker? He's a starter as well. That was a really good pick. I really want to see Chisholm. Oh, nice. Press sucks. Man coverage isn't great, but block shed to, man, uh, to zone coverage ratio is actually pretty good. Dev for Carson. Star Dev. So the third round. So we've seen Lowry. So Lowry and Harrison went. So that's kind of why I missed them. Three to four is that. I mean, it makes sense. Three to four is that went kind of early. Um, I would have expected them to be there. Like somebody around there. And they were both hidden. 82 finesse. No shots. Well, we need a DT, but we actually filled pretty much every other position besides that. It was actually really costly to make this trade, considering he's the third DT on their list. But we trade our center, Lee, who didn't really work out. Two-thirds this, a fourth this, a seventh this, and a seventh next year to grab this star development trade, Poe, who's really not even all that young, but he's star dev and he at least has a chance to uh, develop. I kind of feel like I got scammed. I ain't going to lie. I kind of, I kind of, like... I decided I wanted this guy, and uh, I ended up just overtrading a little bit. He is star dev, and he is still on a rookie contract for another three seasons, but still, it is it feels costly. All right, we ended up trading Bryce Huff off to the Broncos for a third-round pick, still under contract, still had some interest, and I think it's time to move on. Season three, this is the squad. It looks like Lane Johnson is going to be retiring soon enough. He's 35. Sure, I did uh, have to create him myself, but... At the end of the day, he is still regressing like a normal, like, older lineman. So it's not because I had to create it myself that he is still here. It's just, he's still here. We got lucky. We got lucky RNG so far. Um, you know, the seven years experience, that doesn't matter. You know, I can make a rookie right now that's 30 or 40 years old. They'll retire the next season if they're, uh, you know, an offensive lineman. Uh, but looking at the rest of the line, definitely need the center to develop a little bit. But Elam did an okay job of developing. Wagner, the new tight end, hoping he develops. And then uh, Worthy, I actually have as the number one slot guy. Normally, he's the number two slot guy, so maybe he'll have a game or a season. I have the Bills on offense and the Jets on defense right now. It's just something's got to change for this offense. You know, it's just we're not putting up points. We're not putting up stats despite having, you know, the best skill position group in the league. You can't beat the quarterback, running back, and wide receiver duo this team has right now. This is unbeatable. Uh, it's unbeatable. But uh, looking at the defense, linebackers, a lot of potential there. Garner Johnson, I don't actually know what's going on here because he's 28 years old, might need a contract soon. I don't know. We're, we're really against it. Uh, I don't know who we can afford. Uh, Jalen Carter obviously has that fifth-year option. Nolan we passed on, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with re-signing him. Cornerbacks I think are fine. I mean, we have a good team. We could use a DT, maybe a new right end, but... It's the money that's really catching up with us here. Have a pretty good season, 82 mil. I don't know if this is good. Oh, I see 82 mil, and I see A.J. Brown and Saquon Barkley. I think this is going to be a bad season for losing players. Gardner Johnson is absolutely gone, especially with no interest. Nearly 20 mil per year with the red interest because you have to you know, overpay. Nolan Smith, we could probably do that. Okay, we're not actually as screwed as I thought. We just need yet another safety, unfortunately. Uh, and then future-wise, Quinion Michael, uh, Michael Mitchell, uh, not bad. Okay, uh, the question is, can we get Saquon on, like, okay, he is asking, actually asking for a lot of money here. Damn, uh, two-year 41? Oof, 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 might be a tag situation. You know, it's like, you get wide receivers, or you get edge rushers, you get whatever, for a little bit less than what you get in real life, or O-line even, but then you have contracts like that. That's why I kind of just played how it lands and how it lies in game. And I guess you don't get wide receivers that cheap. Damn near 35 mil per for AJ Brown. Top five wide receivers. So I guess, but that's a lot. 30 mil left. We did offer Saquon. So we can actually afford Nolan and at least have options. I don't want to do more than two though. Because I just don't know if he's going to be the guy. So we have 21 mil left, and all we need is a safety, realistically. I can live with those. I can live with that need, unless there's someone else I missed. We're good for at least another season, right? We need special teamers probably going forward, but that's fine. We're okay. I genuinely don't know what's happening with the Cowboys. We're in the playoffs. I don't care about the Cowboys, but what is happening to them? They're 3-14. and 14. Do they, like, get rid of their coach or something? We got to see what's going on here, because this is crazy. Like, this is crazy. Is Tony Pollard that important? Like, I don't really know. I did. They did lose Micah Parsons at some point. Did they just not have Dak? I mean, this scheme is usually good enough to carry anyone, so... Quarterback still Dak. Running back is apparently Pollard again. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, fair enough. No left tackle, obviously. Tyler Smith. 
Center's gone. I mean, okay, so a lot of the line is gone, to be fair. Uh, def yeah, they are a shell of themselves, but you would still think with that offense that they'd still be able to pull something off. But, yeah, they suck. I mean, hey, I'm glad that we're not a part of that crap fest, but, uh, you know, here we are. Jalen Hurts with the Buffalo scheme <laughs> might have won MVP. Uh, still put up rushing numbers, which is why I was thinking Buffalo. If not Buffalo, Chicago, and Chicago might as well just be the Eagles. It's worse for uh, Sim stats. Saquon was still great. A.J. Brown cooked. Devontae was all right. Worthy was okay. Kevin Wagner was actually pretty decent. Might be good enough for a dev up if you won Rookie of the Year. We'll see. Blocking was pretty good. I actually like the scheme there. Defense, though. Nine and a half for Poe. Really good. Carter, eight and a half. Not bad. Castle, seven and a half for his first year. Not bad. And then Nolan still just won't take that leap. Say, uh, you know, interceptions, not great. Elliott missed one kick out of ten. That's okay. Dixon was terrible. Uh, you know, the kind of baseline is like 50 yards per punt, and he didn't even get to 48. Jalen Hurts, number two for MVP. We got scammed. Number two for Coach of the Year. Scammed again. Offensive Player of the Year for the NFC, though. Uh, rookie of the Year was number two, of course. The scams at number two. At least Carson made it interesting and got to number three instead of one or two. Uh, Hertz best QB, Saquon best running back, AJ Brown the third for wide receiver, O line is at eight and ten, D line oh shocking not on the list, linebacker not on the list, linebacker not on the list, and then kicker at number four. But playoff bound, and more XP for guys like Hertz and Saquon obviously. But uh, here it is, the Cardinals. We actually beat them in the regular season, twenty-seven to zero. Don't want to jinx anything, but I like that number, and I would like to see it again. End of the game. 0-0, zero zero, obviously. 3-0. to zero. Nice stop. Get another 3, but just like that, nope, the Cardinals will not score a touchdown. It'll be a 10-point game. We give them the ball back with a short field. It is a 3-point game, and at half, this Cardinals team is not giving up another shutout. They are in this one to the end. 20-10, one touchdown would do it, and yeah. We made it more interesting, or they made it more interesting than it really needed to be, but a win is a win. Jalen Hurts was kind of bad. Can't lie. Kyler Murray, pretty bad too. Saquon was decent. Trey Benson was useless. It's kind of a decent team to get Trey Benson, actually. Cole Komet, uh, touchdown for him. Uh, Carter, two sacks. One and a half for Lawrence. One and a half for Collins. One for Barnes. One for Turner. One for Poe. One for Puppo. Uh, and then interceptions. One for Newsom and Barnes. Cardinals got a lot of new names on that team. And, you know, it got them to the playoffs. Just need more receiving talent, really. The divisional round, it is the Rams. I don't want to, like, crap on the Rams here. Oh, they got Tua as well. I re oh, and Parsons. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. I was going to say things, but I will retract those things. Didn't have a first-round bye, but might as well have called it one as we played the Cardinals. The Rams now 3-0. to 10-0. What is happening? 17 to 0 at half. I just had to talk crap of the Cardinals, who we shut out earlier in the season, and then we get shut out by a crap Rams team compared to us. 24 to 8. I'm sure of it, EA. Way to go. You have cooked. Holy crap. What is this? What is this? Nakua killed us. I just had to talk crap about the Cardinals, didn't I? Unbelievable. See, the most annoying part, uh, part about these, which kind of in, you know, once again, puts out how impressive our Super Bowl kind of record is for getting one in a rebuild this year, you know, year. But if I were to sim that game 10 times, we probably win that 7 out of 10. But we got the unlucky sim of 24 to 8 loss against the Rams. And of course, Rams versus Chiefs in the Super Bowl. We'll see what happens. But I just don't see it. Even with freaking Tua and Micah, they win the whole Super Bowl. Okay, sure, I guess. Why not? I mean, they're an 85 overall. We're a 90. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, Wagner did go to Superstar, I believe. Did he? He did. Okay, 700 yards, 10 touchdowns. I guess maybe the touchdowns did it. Catches, perhaps. Uh, AJ Brown is a 99 overall. Worthy still not to uh, star dev. And no dev ups on the defensive side of the ball, unfortunately. We didn't win the Super Bowl this year, and it's going to be great because we get to go into another season with a worse team, as there is zero, and I mean 0% of a chance that Garner Johnson is playing for us this next season. We don't have the money. Even if we did, it's not worth the money. We're getting another new safety, simply put. This team rotates safeties out left and right anyway, so let's just be real. Uh, but yeah, we just can't afford them even if we wanted to. If your option for Mitchell, we'll wait and just save the money. 
Uh, depth is going to suck, but at least we can afford the team we currently have. And the kickers, Elliot was okay, but the punter was terrible. So we'll just either get Elliot back through free agency, regular without bid warring, or just, uh, you know, get someone completely new. 16 mil, though, tells me we cannot spend money in free agency, but we'll take a quick glance just to see if there's, like, a name that actually maybe is worth it. We have 24 mil now, which is a little bit more, but still absolutely never in a million years was I ever going to get uh, Gardner Johnson back. It's just 17 mil per year is not worth it for him. Chris Jones is a name drop. That would be filthy, but offense is our problem, not defense. So why would I spend more money on defense when it's the offense that sucks? I don't know how to fix said offense because we have about as good of a team you're going to get without going completely bankrupt, but that is factually the problem. Oh, right, yeah, pick 28. Uh, there's a couple of pass rushers. I I mean, I'm kind of looking at them, but I don't think we're going to be able to get to them. They're round ones, and yeah, I mean, if they're outside the top 15, maybe I can make a play, but if they're inside the top 15, yeah, that's, that's a little too rich for my blood, especially since we, once again, need a safety. Looking pretty good so far. They're still here, and we're actually going to get a choice. Okay, I don't know if I like that now. I like that they fell, but I don't know if I like that they fell that hard. Oh, wait, who the hell is this? Terry Bass. What is he, 22 years old? Very slow. That zone coverage. Uh, I like Ben Lynn quite a bit. And then Demarcus Lan uh, Nash is 22 years old. Decently fast. I think Lynn is the best here, right? Ben Lynn, 6'1", 201. Looks great. 21, please. Yes! Bunch of rhymes in there. He's really athletic. 91 speed, 91 excel, 92 uh, agility is great. But 88 jumping, 86 change of direction for a safety is quite up there. All right, I uh, traded up for a running back. It's not very common for me, but from 60 to 55, it did cost us a fifth and a sixth next year with a seventh this year. The Ravens in cap hell could use all the picks they can get. So that's a guy I'm willing to take a chance on. Trading up, Thurman's our guy. And he's hidden. 92 speed, 93 Excel. Uh, with this pick, obviously, we're kind of looking at probably going O-line just for future-proofing again. Hartman looks like the most promising, but at the same time, he is a smaller guy. I don't think it really matters, but I do try to draft, like, size-appropriate players. Like, if I see that guy as a, a future guard or tackle, like, I don't think I see him as a tackle. But Brian Hartman, I think the value is there. 22, please. Yes, we're actually doing pretty well with the hiddens. Really well, especially that running back. You know, you could easily have been normal. We're going to go to the next round, and if Nance is there, I'm going to make a trade up. Don't necessarily need him, but I think the value for a high fourth, for a guy that could be superstar dev, just based on that A man and the fact that he is tall, and I was not being religious there. They really just needed like a seven this year, and I just don't have that. So I traded up a fourth this, a fifth two years from now, and then Frazier instead of like, you know, that seventh this year that I didn't own. No other picks that I do not believe in this draft, but that's okay. Likely going to be going Mayor. I want to see what the, some of the other names are looking like. We got a couple of wide receivers. I almost wanted to go with Juan Charles because it's a bunch of C's in there. 6'5", you know, 21 years old. I really want to see how good he is, but I think Warner's not that hard to draw. I'm going to take Juan Charles, actually. I intended to trade for Nance. I'm taking Charles here. 91 speed, normal dev. I want to see Nance. I probably did sell with that pick, but it seems like... When I look at the roster, every time I need to fill up, you know, release players I don't want and then fill the roster with potential mentors, whatever, it seems like wide receiver is always the thinnest. So I thought maybe we got a sneaky little wide receiver pick, but I do want to see Nance anyways. We just gained 20 mil. Who did we trade? What even just happened? Either way, 74, 75, 71, 69, not bad at all. I don't really care too much about the lineman's dead, but I do want to see the safety and the running back, I think. Iffy man coverage, but very good zone coverage. Very bad uh, injury and toughness. Stamina's okay, I suppose. But uh, let's take a look at the dev. And did we do well? Star dev, so can easily be beaten, but also could also be higher than anyone else. Uh, and then, of course, I do want to see the running back. Because, I mean, looking forward to it. I don't know if we're actually going to see that because we only have one more season after this. But this would probably be the starting running back, right? You know, and we actually have some depth for once. And he's a superstar! That is a really good draft pick, although we almost never... I can't do 36. That is the Brian Westbrook. Someone's going to be like, ah, uh, Corey Clement would like to have a word. It's like, relax. I mean, we're going to run out of numbers. If Brian Westbrook is getting that treatment for me, I mean, we're, we're going to run out of numbers. Uh, Davis, 83 overall. I am kind of curious. Like I said, with safeties and DBs, it's hard to tell if they're actually generational. This is a guy I would definitely 
lean to oh my injury lean towards generational but at the same time i seen the low injury guys are usually star dev any superstar so i mean i was completely wrong i thought he was generational and i thought he was star he was superstar thank you ea you've really shown me and nance was a 73 overall he was normal okay um I would probably still rather have him if I was in like a user league, because even though he's 88 speed, you get a plus three to speed. That's 91 speed, six foot four. Could definitely work with that. Catch sucks though, but more fun to have a six four corner than a six five wide receiver, I think. But you know, Mitchell's actually been pretty sick in our Bears franchise, which has been really fun. So it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, let's. Wow, 41 players. Usually I have more than this. We may be more broke than I thought. It's at 42 mil, though. What are we worried about? So I have learned a sad, and I realize why we had that money. And maybe you guys knew before I did. But Ross is now the starter because Lane Johnson is retired. It is now down to Mylotta and Dickerson for the OG line, if you will. And I mean, you can't even really call Dickerson that much of an OG line, but kind of. Uh, but the rest of the team does look pretty damn good. Gonna rock the Buffalo scheme again, I guess, but yeah, I don't know what it is. And then defense, we haven't really seen the progression we wanted to. Uh, I'm gonna be putting Blades at the starting spot. It's crazy to think, but I'm gonna give him a chance. I mean, he's not great, but I don't know what it is, but Nolan just hasn't played. You know what? We'll play one more season. One more season with Nolan as a starter, and then we're just gonna replace him with someone, because I don't think Blades is the guy either, to be fair, so we're gonna change that out, but... Here it is. Let's see if we can make it happen in year four. This is usually our magic year, I will say. 53 mil. Jalen Carter needs to be paid. That's a guy I would definitely not want to lose. Mitchell I would not want to lose either. Wilson for the value maybe wouldn't want to lose. Worthy for the value I definitely wouldn't want to lose. So we would be cutting it a bit close here. Needing to pay Castle, a pass rusher, uh, for the future. I think we can pull it off, though. Jalen Carter, I don't think you could lose, right? Especially for the value. I mean, 25... Okay, it's a little more than I thought. Math is hard, okay? I don't know who decided to make it so difficult, but... Like, they need to stop. Four-year 102, that's not bad, though. Uh, Mitchell, he's the cornerback one, so obviously we keep him around. Nice, I'm a little surprised that these contracts are going. Wilson, I don't know. Worthy, I kind of like this as maybe even he being a replacement for... Devonte down the line i'm just saying you know Devonte's younger than aj but we have aj for a better contract and then wilson this is uh you know what is that eight mil per seven and a half seven and a half mil i think you gotta save money somewhere and i think we can save money with him as i mean we would be in an okay spot still we could afford him but we have other players to pay you know we need a little bit of money for backups for depth and then obviously we need you know, a little bit more money for special teamers. And then obviously Castle needs uh, we need some money. But Wilson's not bad value. Unless I do like a one-year deal, I highly doubt he takes it. But a one-year eight? Yeah, I mean, I think we just save the money and let him go. Could have a good chance at the bye week if we get this win. And we do win, but we still don't get the bye week. Uh, looks like the Cowboys still kind of suck, which... Hey, this is an Eagles rebuild, so we are on team, you know, everyone but us uh, in the in the division, obviously. Uh, but, uh, yeah, pretty good season. Unfortunately, just fell short probably by, like, a win, maybe two, of uh, getting that bye week. Jalen Hurts a little bit down of a year because he had more touchdowns last year, but touchdown to pick ratio is still really good anyways. 4,200 yards is great. Did put Thurman at the power back spot because, once again, at some point, he will be replacing Barkley. It would maybe be season six, which, of course, five seasons is our max because the videos are already long as, you know, as as they need to be. Devontae and uh, AJ, not bad. Both over 1,000 worthy. Not bad either. And then Wagner, 469 yards, so definitely a down year for him. But Barkley was great for receiving, which helps him with the lack of rushing numbers or lower rushing numbers, if you will. Defensively, Castle with 10 sacks, Poe with 9, and then Nolan's just not him. Don't know if it's the size, because Nolan is only 6'2", but yeah, I mean, we're going to have to draft somebody. I don't know how we're going to get a better kicker. Uh, I don't know why I said kicker. Great, great job, I guess. The Orc was the new punter, pretty good too. I don't know how we're going to get a new pass rusher, because it seems like they all suck outside of the top 15 picks, but we'll have to do something, because it's just it's not working with Nolan. He's really kind of letting us down at that spot. Jalen Hurts at number four with MVP being Lamar Jackson's. Uh, any award wins? Thurman Rookie of the Year. I don't know if I agree with us deserving that, but sure, Hurts at number two, 
Barkley at number two, that is Pro Bowl for both. AJ Brown at number five, Devontae at number nine, O line at number six. We're creeping up there. It was eight and ten. Now we're at six. A couple more seasons will be at number one. Castle of four could be a Pro Bowl. Pretty good season. Uh, oh, we also seen uh, Poe at number 10. Poe has been a really good player for us, though. Let me tell you. No linebackers. DB, not there. And then Eagles are number two for kicker. Elliott could have finally won best kicker, but not going to happen. We always talk about it. Year four is a lot of our Super Bowl years. Can it happen yet again? Byron Young, the X Factor? Going to the end of the game against the division rival Commanders. We look like we got a look like we got two really good stops and no points out of them. I don't know why we are allergic to points. We are allergic to scoring. Achoo. Yeah, I said it. 10 to 17 to 10, down by 10. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay, no, I can't. I can't. I'm just uh, okay. Yeah, I am. Okay, I'm I'm a little confused. Backing out, I want to change the playbook of the Chiefs, see what happens, but I'm going to take the L no matter what. Like, I think I already know the answer, but I am just curious about it. Okay, I want to see. Also, the Jets scheme, not actually too bad for getting stats. I, I, I think we're all right with the Jets scheme defensively. A couple of sacks for the DTs and stuff like that. But we're going to be going with the Chiefs. We're going to see what happens. I mean, win or lose, we're obviously going to be forcing the loss because we technically deserve the loss. We lost 31-7 to with... <laughs> What is happening with this team? Uh, but 31-7 to was the loss, in fairness. But I am curious to see how much it is that playbook. I don't know what to tell you, though, because normally it's like, okay, yeah, we're running like a really stupid playbook. The Bills are an okay playbook. They're not great, but they're decent, right? We looked at those numbers. We, I mean, I would love to see what our actual team totals ended up with, but it's got to be top 15. But uh, if we even get one point more, we have outscored the whole last game. And it's only the first half. 21 to 14, 28 to 14, 35 to 14, 38 to 14. I mean, I don't know what to do here because, I mean, it's the playbooks that ma matter so many times. It is like 5% at best of our rebuilds if we won a Super Bowl using a scheme that is the original team scheme. It's It just doesn't work, but... Either way, we are going to let ourselves lose. I just wanted to see. I really just want to see. And it does seem like the Chiefs playbook is that powerful. I don't know what to do, though. I really don't. Because it's like you just keep running the same OP playbooks. And that's the only way it happens. Especially since we lost to a team that didn't even make the Super Bowl anyways. Niners versus the Chiefs. Seen the Chiefs so many times. They win a Super Bowl. Let's take a look at those dev ups. Trying to think. Thurman, I don't think he could get a dev up because it's. I think you can only max out to superstar with award win dev ups. And then defensively, maybe Castle had a chance. Carson did go up in dev, so it's been kind of rare to get dev ups for us in this one. But at least we get one finally. Carson gets there. Thought Castle with that double digit, like I said, would have gotten it, but unfortunately didn't. Uh, Barkley's still good enough for one more year, so that's why I wanted to do the, do the two year instead of the three year. Lose a bit of speed there, too. 90 speed to 92 Excel. He's still really good, but definitely did regress to a point where, like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable after this season with him. Uh, and then Thurman. I don't know what you want to do with him here because he's already a good power back. Elusivity would be pretty good, too, though. I really don't know what you would want to do. Oh, speed upgrade. 80 overall. So that actually was really nice upgrading because, obviously, he's still going to get power back as his main but he got a couple of upgrades to elusive there anyways or elusive type ratings but yeah let's go to the offseason the final offseason no matter what i don't know if i'm gonna rock the chiefs playbook even though we obviously seen that we competed completely differently against the commanders with a different scheme like the chiefs but definitely not gonna go with the bills because it's obviously holding us back as well we've done the eagles the bills and now psh, i don't know dude can't be the ravens because while they win mvp the ravens almost never make it to the super bowl and uh win it all but as far as fifth-year options, at 18 mil, I would have done it. At 29 mil, there's no point. So we're going to be letting him walk. Uh, well, not walk, but the fifth-year option walk. We're going to definitely let Wilson go. His contract also improved for him. And special teamers, we just kind of go with whoever's left, try to save as much money as we can, which we need to every single season. So I think that kind of sucks about rebuilding a team that isn't really in a rebuild year is that if they have a quarterback they've paid or need to pay shortly – can't really do much as far as like free agency flexibility. You're basically stuck with who you got, which I don't mind because I do like who we got. But still, it's just a little disappointing seeing some cool names in free agency just 
walk away because we can't do anything about it. All right, pick 23. There's actually a good amount of pass rushers in this le uh, draft. I don't know who's the best of the bunch. Uh, also, this left tackle kind of looks like a generational, if you ask me. I don't know a whole lot, but uh, looks pretty good to me. Uh, maybe not. Nah, he does have a B power block for run block, but maybe... No, he's got a good A finesse block. Could be generational. Does look pretty good, but um, yeah, let's take a look at our players. I don't know why I even stopped to look at him. We'll never go for him. Uh, but pass rushers, Thomas, Pritchett, Winston, Derek Franklin... Coffee, McMullen. Coffee was on the slower side. McMullen, uh, Jones, Stroud. Some pretty good pass rushers here. I'm gonna try to get to 15, then kind of see, you know, who's uh, who's went because I can't really get up higher than 15. We probably could get to 15. If we had to, but with all the options there, I think you probably do just, you know, play the waiting game. 23 looks like we will be able to grab, honestly, our choice. And we will. 23 in the second round. I'm not sure where we're going to go. Maybe more O-line for future-proofing, which we obviously did with our right tackle. Uh, like I said, I think Winston looked the best. But I will say McMullen looks pretty good, too. He's 6'4", 278, decently athletic. A power move. This is a type of guy that I would really bet is normal dev, though. We'll see. I might be wrong. I do worry about this uh, zone. So C-tackling... A, a lot of A's outside of that, but C tackling. Do we know anything about Mr. McMullen? We did our due diligence last time and it worked out. A tackling. Uh, B play rec as like him. A to C awareness versus... I'm going to actually go McMullen. Yes, hidden dev. We're cooking. We'll see. Winston might have been good too, but as long as they're hidden, I don't really care too much. Like, yeah, so one could be superstar, one could be next vendor. I don't really care that much. As long as they're hidden, right? And I do need another linebacker. Uh, we need a starting linebacker, actually. So we might go with that in the late second. We've seen a couple of three to fours there. So don't really have to do anything too crazy. But let's move to that third, uh, 23 spot in the second round. And it's a little bit further than 10. But you are getting a, a better significant fourth rounder. We'll have to be very careful because I do want to get at least one linebacker. I think, you know what? We're going to go to eight. Could you imagine we get three third-round picks? Because it's some pretty good talent here in the three to four, uh, like it usually is. That's a nice trade-up. We shall see if we have landed ourselves a hidden development trade linebacker. I think that's the route we're going to go. Bar looks pretty good. A to C block shed or zone coverage could be anything. I like him. Yes, hidden dev. We have done really well. I don't know what it is about the teams that are good already. But we just draft well with those teams. I don't know what it is. Van Dyke, another really good player there. Um, not, not really sure what I want to do here because we need O-line, like I said, but could need even more linebackers going forward. O-line, uh, there are some decent players here, but there's less decent linemen than there is linebackers at this point. So I'm actually going to go with Cam Gibson. Cam, we do it again. We cam not. All right, we trade a uh, two fourths this, a six and a seven next, with two uh, players just to push it slightly over the edge for a third and a six this year from the Raiders. Kind of want to get like a fullback or something in the second, uh, the sixth round, or maybe a special teamer of some sort. I haven't really looked at special teamers too much, but with this pick, we are going to be going with Franklin, who I think is the best remaining lineman, 22 years old, six four, decent looking, and hit and dev. Trying to find a team that would give me two draft picks this year, but we're going to end up getting a seventh next year to add to the depth and obviously still get pick seven this year, which I don't know what I'm going to use it on yet, but uh, maybe a special teamer. Maybe finally have someone that'll be on the team for more than a year. Only guy with elite kick power, but he has pretty bad accuracy, Nolan Cleveland. And he's in dev. It is really not that tough. So yeah, say that to all the normal dev kickers and punters you've drafted. Uh, well, let's take a look at how good we did, because obviously we there was a couple of options there at uh, Edge. Got ourselves a bigger dude that can kind of stop the run as well. Mick Mullen, auto starter. Barr, auto starter. Gibson, back up. We'll take it. And then Franklin, the depth piece. Let's take a look at Mick Mullen. It is right end we need, I believe, as well. 80 speed, 87 excel. Decent power move. Okay, block shed. Dev, if there was anyone that was going to have Superstar Plus, I feel like it would be him. And it wasn't him. It is year five, the very final season of this rebuild. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see what Xavier Worthy looks like. Oh, he's actually good. 
He's insanely fast. His catching's a little low, but he's really good at route running and pretty good at release. He's not a bad receiver at all. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like we've built a pretty good roster. We've maintained the roster about as well as possible. This is instead of a rebuilding, it's more of a maintaining, maintain building. I don't know what that means. But, uh, obviously, it doesn't help that we're restarting at right end. But we kind of thought no one was going to be the guy. Never was. 82 overall. Don't even know what his uh, pass rush ability got up to. 85 finesse. But... It just didn't work out, unfortunately, and it's going to be really disappointing if McMullen does better than any of Nolan Smith's seasons here in his first year as a rookie. But, uh, yeah, the defense is, I mean, the worst part of the team, but it's still not bad by any means. But uh, I've yet to decide what scheme to use. I'm trying to think. I mean, it's like the Chiefs are always in it. What team has been competing with them? Like... I don't want to do the Chiefs, but at the same time, there's no team as consistent as the Chiefs. Do we try the Rams? Rams are, like, so out of, like, left field, though. You know what? Year 5, I think, is, is Chiefs playbook time. I think that's that's what we're going to do. Year 5, if we haven't won a Super Bowl by then, it's time to run the Chiefs, see the max potential of the roster. Well, at least at that point in time, because obviously there's going to be uh, a lot of drop-offs at Year 5. Like, I, I don't remember what year our best team was, but maybe, like, Year 2 or Year 3. So, uh, you know, it's not really... You know, fair to even call it that, but we at least get to see a chance. Okay, was was the team good enough to win a Super Bowl or not? You know, and uh, here we are in year five trying that out. The last re-signing. Uh, oh my lord, there's a lot of money. The last re-signings of the rebuild, of course. Jalen Hurts asking for a little over fifty-five mil per year. Probably gonna do damn near sixty. Matthew Davis. Oh, he is gonna be gone, huh? Castle, I mean, at this point, he's our best pass rusher by a mile. So, really? Okay, 79 mil, and we've only offered two contracts so far. Uh, Newsome, cornerbacks are a dime a dozen in Madden. So, I am going to think about it. Elam, he's pretty good. Oh, this is the year, huh? This is the year. Obviously, Poe, got to keep him because he's actually had some really good seasons. I just gave a seven-year to a 26-year-old. Well... Hopefully he gets a dev up. That's all I can say. Uh, a lot of linemen, though. There is a lot of linemen that we will be losing. Because you just can't afford linemen in a long-term rebuild. I'm surprised we afforded two linemen making top dollar as long as we did. But uh, I guess we pay Newsome because I think the value is there. So we still have a little bit of money. 55 mil. But how much are these linemen? Elam is quite a bit. Davidson's not bad. So Davidson we could afford. We're going to go for Davidson. One, uh, seven year 85, so we're, we're okay with that. 42 mil left with Landon asking for 20 per. Mylotta asking for a lot more than that, but he is a goon tackle. I think you let go of a guard before the tackle, right? 15 mil, and I think that's all we can afford. So we'd have to get a new linebacker, a new right guard, a new left guard, a new... Is that Matthew Davis twice? Okay, uh... And that's kind of it. But that's still a lot. And a new running back. But we have Thurman at least. The final week. If we win, we get the division. We lose. But we still hold the division. And at 12-5, and five, get a bye week. About damn time. Especially the last season. Being 13-4 and four and missing the bye week. Losing to that Packers team. Who was only 6-10 and 10 at the time. With the Cowboys right on our heels. Could have been such a sell. But year 5. The final year. Rocking the Chiefs playbook. But I gotta admit... Win-loss-wise, wasn't that much better. But stats-wise, outside of Barkley, looking a little bit better. Wagner, obviously, could get to expect with that. Definitely better for the receiving numbers, without a doubt. O-line, a lot of sevens in there. Wait, somebody got zero sacks allowed. Who was that? Larry Elam's a free agent as a superstar, I think. That's crazy. Didn't change the defensive scheme, and wow, did we have a crap year. I don't know how to switch to, but Carson could be an X-Factor. Newsom could be a superstar. Should be clutch. Cleveland, the rookie, was great. Bjorko is back and very good yet again. Worthy with a punt return touchdown. Let's take a look at these award wins if we had any. Hurts at number two for MVP. That kind of hurts. Uh, rookie of the Year awards, none. Best QB at number two. Best running back, not on the Nope, number three, actually. A little surprised to be that high, to be honest. That's why I kind of looked past that. Devonta Smith, the best wide receiver from us this year, was number 10. Oh, Elam got snubbed anyways by Sewell. Uh, looking at the D-line, Carter at three. No one else, obviously. Linebacker, three for Davis. Seven for Carson, which is pretty cool. 
DB, Newsom at three. That's a Pro Bowl and hopefully a dev up. And then we got the best kicker. I don't know if he was already a superstar, but if not, he will be. By week, though, let's see who it is. We have no cap space and we're about to lose a lot of players, but the Vikings, I'm going to put the damn playoff blizzard on as well. It's the Vikings. They play inside. The most snow they get at home is that time the stadium, you know, decided to to just become, you know, not a dome anymore. It just said, you know, I'm sick of it. I, I'm i going to get some fresh air. But let's take a look at it. 92, 86. Hawkinson Bynum's an X-Factor. That's an interesting name drop. He can't be that good of an overall, though. Like, 86 at best. And here it is, the snowy one. I do want to see what that overall is, though. I don't know why. It just it means a lot to me to see what the overall is. McCarthy is their guy. Might even need to do a uh, Vikings rebuild like that. Uh, Bynum is an 81 overall. Excuse me, too high. End of the game. Don't tell me we're going to go out at home in the snow against a dome team. A cold weather team, but it's not a cold weather team because they play in a dome. But they, they experience it when they walk to the dome, I, I guess, kind of. Uh, this is way too close of a game for my liking. We are up by a touchdown, and we finally do... Pull away enough, 42 to 28. I mean, any given Sunday, and man, it was almost a hell of a Sunday. Hurts through a pick, which technically means he had a worse game than McCarthy, kind of. Better yards per care, uh, can, you know, throw or attempt, but still. Cody Schrader, we almost lost a team starting him. That is interesting because he is not a good overall. Barkley cooked, though. 158 yards with three touchdowns with his longest being a 38 yarder. That's consistent goatery. Uh, Devontae was great again. Devonta, or AJ Brown. 100 yards on four catches. That's really good yards per uh, catch, but obviously the long kind of uh, made that look the way it does. One total sack, and it was the two DTs that combined. Quincy Williams with one interception, and their kicker missed the kick. You know how hard it is to combine for a sack with the DTs? Like, how are two DTs going to get there at the same time? One of them is likely to be double teamed, right? Especially on this team. But it is what it is. Let's move on to the next round, which is already the championship round. God, you don't got to remember, the Vikings did have to actually beat a team to get there. But uh, let's take a look at this playoff blizzard. It is A.J. Brown giving us some morale boostage and some XP, apparently. Or not morale boostage, just staff points and XP, which 2,500 XP is still great XP. Championship round, anyone but the Cowboys. And it's the Falcons. I haven't seen the Cowboys here. I'm chilling. 89 overall, though, for them with 93 for us. They are a very good overall, and the Falcons' scheme is no joke for passing. Not a super impressive win, I think 14-7, to but ironically enough, the Ravens are in the Super Bowl. Just talked about how their scheme never gets them in the Super Bowl or winning it. And yet, if we win this game, that's who we are waiting for, or they're waiting for us. That's who is, awaits us, if you will. 21-17, to fourth quarter. One touchdown could do it for either team, and we will win this game 35-24. to Can you say it's the Chiefs' scheme? Yeah, to me, you kind of can. Jalen Hurts cooked this one, though. Finally, Barkley did not. Devontae Smith, though. Look at those numbers. 216 yards, three touchdowns on six catches. Pretty impressive. Sacks, two for Carter, two for Murphy. The DT's going off. Pick for Mitchell, and the kicks were clean. Super Bowl versus the Ravens. I mean, like I said, it did take the Chiefs' playbook on offense, but a Super Bowl berth is a Super Bowl berth, and I am just glad to be here with a team that really doesn't need a rebuild, finally getting to the Super Bowl in the very final season of said rebuild. But let's see it. Like I said, it wasn't a very inspiring win from the Ravens, but a win is a win. That's all that matters. Once you get to that stage and you have a chance at it all, bird battle is real. Six overall difference. DevOps, tight end, does go to X-Factor, and Jalen Hurts already was an X-Factor, so I'm not really sure why I'm pausing here. I don't know why I thought he was a superstar, but he just obviously isn't. Defensively, Carson goes to Superstar X-Factor. Carter goes to X-Factor. Surprise, Matt. Uh, Davis didn't, but Jalen Carter, who's always developed as a block shedder in-game, is still a pretty good overall. But here it is. The Ravens versus us. We are the better team, but that has stopped no team going up against us. Let's also click these damn freaking m morale boosters. Although, I don't know if that's even smart to do because they, like, both teams just got, like, a plus 10 to play rack and this and that and this. We have the better team, so, and then, if anything, it's kind of stupid to do that now, right? Because, like, they're getting the boost, while if we're already, like, let's say, 94 play rack, 
we get a plus, what, five? And they could get a plus ten. So we're just making them better than us, which is really just stupid. But it's too late now. Oh, I thought that was the snow coming in again. Here it is. Let's see it, ironically enough, of all the stadiums to play in. Super Bowl between the Eagles and the Ravens. I mean, win or lose, it's a successful one as we did get to the Super Bowl. But it would be nice to cap it off with yet another Super Bowl win. 10-10. to Halftime score of 10 to 10, 13 to 10. Ravens, 13 to 17. Might actually get to come into the game for once. Up by three, get the stop. Usually in those get the stop situations, we've actually scored touchdowns. We do there. Miss the extra point, though. And with 19 seconds left, I don't know if the clock's running. But if it is, it is. We win. I was about to say, if it isn't, they are nine seconds away from a chance to win by one. But the Eagles will win it all. 26-20 over the Ravens. Like I said, the Ravens, not a really inspiring game in the championship round. But it doesn't matter as long as you get to that Super Bowl. And obviously, they gave us a run there right up until the end. This team clutched up, as it usually does, though, and finds a way to win. And they are Super Bowl champions yet again. Obviously, this is a completely different unit than their last Super Bowl. But not that long of a difference, uh, you know, in years from their last Super Bowl. But, of course... The O-line, which is about to be uh, disassembled. Dissembled? Disassembled? Yeah, disassembled. It gets one last chance at it, and they get it. Jalen Hurts and company still intact for the most part, but definitely going to be taking a hit on that O-line. And in turn, could be taking it. Hey, Lane Johnson, how are you? I didn't know he was here. Uh, a chance. Taking a hit on our chances at winning another one. But obviously, in this rebuild realm, that's where we cut it. Five years is our, our max, and we win in the last season. I'll show you guys the win-loss. Barkley was bad this game. What, and last game? Then he had a really good game before that. Uh, but pretty tame numbers. Nothing really going. We missed the extra point, which could have costed us all. But in the end, the defense holds on, and we are champions. Take a look at those win-losses, like I said. And then take a look at the team that obviously developed... Okay, Lee. I feel like there was a lot of players on defense that didn't really develop that quickly, but at the end of the day, we did win the whole thing. Uh, divisional round, one game played. Falcons, one game played. And there you go, the Super Bowl, one game played. Uh, went with the Jets defense, which for a while was looking okay, and then it was really bad this year. And then, of course, the Chiefs offense with West Coast spread. Base 4-3 for defense, I believe. Uh, but let's go. I'm glad we can reward your faith, coach. You put the right kind of pressure on us to deliver and fire the guys up. You still in the momentum. And, okay, yeah, I mean, sure, we'll we'll be great next game. Preseason week one, like many months away. But, yeah, we'll be we'll be ready. But let's take a look at those players. Uh, I don't think we actually looked at Jalen Hurts, did we? I think we, we kind of glanced over it. Throw power is only 89, which is a disappointment. But Still insanely fast, very accurate, and that's really all you can ask for. Paranoid sense of pressure is really rough, though. Then we have Saquon. He is regressed, but I am still kind of curious to see how good he is right now. Still very good, right? What are his abilities? Wrecking ball, balance beam, running back, apprentice, playmaker. I don't know if he had a 95 slot, but if he did, it ain't here anymore. AJ Brown, the 99 overall at 31. Does he regress? No? Okay. Uh, progression, obviously, we haven't hit the regression point, but that's a good point to not look at. Devontae Smith, uh, 29 years old, might have actually regressed recently enough because I feel like he was a higher overall in this. Release never got up there, but really good route running, decent speed, great catching, obviously. Uh, and then we did look at Worthy Reels recently enough, but let us get his upgrades up a little bit more. His release is kind of a problem, but his catching is even more of a problem. So physical to try to get catching and release, which three to release is ridiculous. 87 release, 99 speed. 90. Was it 99 XL or very close to it? He's kind of cooking. Uh, Dickerson, I suppose we'll take a look at. 89 overall. Does have an upgrade. That finesse blocking is terrible. He does not actually have an upgrade. I was looking at someone else. Uh, but Mylotta is going to be a little bit more of the same, probably. Nope. Just a goon across the board. He is really good. Holy crap. Uh, Davidson, Elam. None of these guys are real, so I don't really care. Uh, I know Wagner isn't real either, but he's not a lineman either. Uh, very good catching. Route running, especially for shorts, great. Deep route is just terrible. You just can't get that up. It's, like, impossible. Uh, but that was pretty much it for the offense. Now the defensive side of things. Like I said, didn't really develop the way I wanted to, but the linebacking group definitely cooked. Problem is, Davis needs to uh, go because we can't afford him. But 91 block shed, basically a DT. 78 zone, 
basically just a really good linebacker. Didn't really get that speed up, though. Really good tackling, pursuit, play rec, all that. He's a very smart player. That's all that can really said, be said about him. Very smart, great block shed. Uh, and then we move on to Carson, who's an 88 overall. Gets the Superstar X Factor. He's so young, though, so his ceiling is you know very high. Very balanced. Got to be field general, which it is. Uh, jumping 82. Decently athletic. I don't know if he went up in speed as well, one maybe, but that's that. Bar is really no point. We just got him. Kennard, 84 overall, 24. Plenty of time to develop. He's been developing really well with hybrid. He's got 86 man, 84 zone. That is fantastic. Obviously, block shit is... Really bad, especially for a guy that... Was it 225? I feel like it was 225. 220. 5'11", 220. He's got 50 block shed. I feel like he should easily be able to tank because of the size. 82 overall for uh, Ben Lin. Let's see if 83 overall is even better. Who would have thought that it is? Uh, very young, obviously. 87 zone already. 92 speed, 91 excel. He is him. These safeties, a lot of potential there. Newsom, another upgrade there. Uh, zone coverage. Normally I go with slot because it's just busted, but uh, we do need a bit of zone coverage. Nine, 89 zone, 96 man, very fast, great press, decent enough catch. Good player, simply put, just a good player. Wiggins, going to be an 89 overall, I believe, so another really good corner for the rebuilds. 89 overall for Mr. Mitchell. Two to zone coverage, puts him at 81. 92 man, insanely fast. Press is actually a little bit lower than I would have thought, to be fair, for a man coverage corner. McMullen is new, so I don't really care too much about that. Uh, and Castle already had a pretty good power move, so I'm going to go with block shedding just because you don't really get that manual upgrade in too often. Yeah, especially when 97 power move. Not the fastest, but 97 power move is kind of crazy. Then we look at the DTs. We already looked at Carter. We'll take a look at Poe now, who actually was one of our more consistent pass rushers, ironically enough, on the team. Traded kind of a lot for him. Worth every penny. Uh, if he block shed, but pretty damn strong and great finesse for, well, a finesse guy. Usually you don't see that kind of strength. And then I think, yeah, we said we weren't going to look at McMullen, but we will. We'll take a look at McMullen real quick. 82 power mill, a move well on his way. Even though he didn't really have that good of a season, but should still get there one way or another. Cleveland looks like the blue is back because he probably just got Superstar, which he did. Got a kick power upgrade recently enough as well, and he's maxed. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll just go with the accuracy to finish this one out. But that is pretty much going to be it for this Eagles Realistic Style Rebuild. Let me know what you guys think I did well, what we could have done better, what you would have done in the draft for the real-life class, the first one. Maybe you would have, like, not touched uh, Worthy because you're like, why do I need wide receiver that bad? Let's not do that. But I felt like it was a fun pick, a very eagerly pick as well, just to... You know, instead of going exactly what you need, you feel like, if I grab, grab this wide receiver, maybe even Seahawks Lee, if you will, with the JSN joining, you know, Metcalf and Lockett, you know, maybe this team is even more unpo you know, impossible to stop. Who cares about getting, you know, an extra DT or an extra linebacker that we might have wanted? You know, you get that, that burner, and maybe you just become that much more elite. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have uh, a suggestion for what team you want to see next, I know a lot of people have been talking about the Giants, which... Definitely need to because that was the team that actually won the poll like several rebuilds ago. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you have another team that you want to see. Um, like I said, maybe follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care, second channel, PK Plays. If you're new, leave a like, subscribe if you're new in general. And if you're not new, I do appreciate your continued support on the channel, especially with these rebuilds. I know there's been a lot of them and they're kind of long. And I appreciate each and every one of you. That's about it, though. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you guys come back for next video. But until next video.